Okay, so we're at the end of the unit, and we have studied right triangle trigonometry for the first half of the unit, non-right triangle trigonometry for the second half. So as for right triangle strategies, we had our 30-60 and our 45-45 special triangles, and for those we were simplifying with square roots. Then we had our sine, cosine, and tangent, which we abbreviated as SOHCAHTOA to try to help us remember which ones go with which triangles. We also had Pythagorean theorem, of course, if we knew two sides in a right triangle. And then all of our non-right triangle strategies. So the oblique triangle um, formulas were law of sines, law of cosines, which we generalized to have any angle with its opposite side. And then the area formula for a non-right triangle, any two sides with the angle between. All right, so we just need to know which one goes with which. As we look at a given problem, we should be able to identify which type of strategy to use and then employ that. So if you take a second to read exercise one, and then we'll get started with it. Okay, so what's going on here is the um, surveyor is standing at point B, uh, standing at point A, and he walks toward point B. His, his goal is to end up measuring the distance across the river. So this DC segment is our ultimate goal. Um, the river's sides are relatively parallel and straight, so we're gonna treat them as if they are straight. And so they have measured um, an angle from point A out to point D of 22 degrees using a clinometer of some kind. And they have moved 2,400 feet along the shore. And at that point, they measure a new angle at 56 degrees to that same exact vision point across the river. So they're standing at A, they measure. They're standing at B, they measure. All right, so we want to figure out that distance for DC. Now, we've seen a problem like this before, this double triangle problem. If we can solve for part of the right triangle, we can then use our right triangle strategies to solve for x. So what we want to do is get the other missing angles within the oblique triangle. Well, I've got a 56 degree angle, so treating the river as a straight edge, I can use a linear pair and get 124 for angle B. I can then come across the, um, the triangle and subtract from 180 to get this 34 degree angle up here. So I've got two out of, uh, I've got all three angles labeled. So I should be able to solve for y at this point simply by using my law of sines. So I'm taking 22, connecting it across to y, taking 34 and connecting it across to 2400. All right, so if I set up the law of sines, I would have these ratios. So to solve that, I wanna do a cross product. I'm gonna end up isolating the y by dividing sine 34. All right, so once I know what y equals, 1607, I can then put that into the triangle. And now at this point, I have a right triangle with a known hypotenuse. I'm just gonna mark that here. I have a known hypotenuse, and I have a, an opposite side from the 56 that I'm interested in solving for. The O and the H tell me to use sine. So it's sine 56 equals opposite X over hypotenuse 1607. So multiply by 1607, and we end up with about 1,332 feet. Okay, so using one triangle to solve another is a common strategy in both right triangle and non-right triangle trig. All right, exercise two. Let me read through it and then come back and we'll discuss. So we have an isosceles trapezoid. We are trying to measure, we know that the base is 25. We know the angles are 60. The legs are both 12. So all that's been labeled for us. We want to stabilize the trapezoid by placing support beams along the diagonal. So we just draw in those support beams. Those support beams are going for $2.50 a foot. So if we can figure out how long they are, we can know how much they cost. Okay, now I'm actually going to just solve one of these at a time. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because what I'm interested in doing is keeping the 60 degree angle available to me. In an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonal does not split the diagonal, the um, angle equally. It does not bisect it. So I don't know how that 60 degrees would have been split there. So if I do both diagonals at the same time, I'm not going to have any angles that I'm sure about. But if I just do one diagonal at a time, then I can use this 60. I have a side angle side labeling system here. And so law of cosines should help me to get this side across from the, um, the 60 degree angle. Now, you might look at that 60 and think, oh, wait, I can do 30, 60, 90 here. Well, you could if you had a 90, but we don't know that we have a right angle anywhere. 
So that strategy is only if we're sure we're dealing with a right triangle. All right, pardon that brief announcement. So let's go back to where we are here. We're going to use the law of cosines. And notice my, um, let me just put the x in where I'm solving. So I'm solving here. That's across from the 60. So the x squared and the cosine 60 go together. 25 and the 12 can be inserted in any order. And then when I go to solve that, all of this goes under a square root sign on a calculator. So that's why I don't have any partial um, calculations here. So 21.7 feet, that's my diagonal. I've got two of them. And so that's 43.4 feet. And then per square foot, so times $2.50 gives me $108.50. So take a look back at your work and see how close you got. All right, on to exercise three. Town Planning Board wishes to place sod village commons in the shape of a triangle lengths 120, 165, and 200. So let's get that drawn first. So let's see, something, something like this, I guess. All right, and so I put 120 and 165 and 200. And the sod costs 35 cents per square foot. Now that per square foot part tells me that I'm going to need to figure out the area of this triangle. So the area of any non-right triangle is one half x times y times sine theta. All right, well, I have three sides labeled here. So any two of those could be my x and my y. So if I can figure out an angle, then I can use this formula with the two sides surrounding it. Okay, so this is a side, side, side triangle, which tells me law of cosines is what I need to do. If I'm not told what angle to solve for, then I'm always going to pick the biggest one. And I know that that angle is the biggest because it's across from 200. So to solve this, my 200 and my theta are tied together. So 200 squared is equal to 120 squared plus 165 squared minus 2 times 120 times 165 times cosine theta. Okay, remember to solve for missing angle, we need to move the squares over. And so 200 squared minus 120 squared minus 165 squared equals negative 2 times 120 times 165 cosine theta. Once the squares have been moved, we solve the squares, we solve the coefficients. So we have negative 1625, and we have negative 39,600. So we want to isolate cosine theta next. So cosine theta will be negative 1625 over negative 39,600. So let's take the negatives off. 1625 over 39,600. So theta must equal the inverse cosine of that ratio. So I enter that into the calculator and I'm getting about 87.65 degrees. Okay, so now I know that angle. That's 87.65 degrees. Well, to use the area formula, I need two sides with an angle between. So let's say this is 1 half times 120 times 165 times sine of 87.65. And so my answer comes out to about 9,891.7. And this is inches, inches, no, feet squared, feet squared. And I'm using this conversion rate, 0.35, so times 0.35 gives me a grand total of $3,462. It wants it to the nearest dollar, so $3,462. All right, lastly, exercise four. Angle of elevation can help a ship to determine how far it is from the shore, which is good to know, good to know how much room you have to, before you crash into something. So boat starts at point A, looks up at the lighthouse, 28 degree angle travels for 3.2 miles toward the lighthouse, looks up again, 36 degree angle. Makes sense that it's a bigger angle because it's a steeper line of sight. All right, so after traveling that time, we've got the new angle of elevation. We want to de determine the distance from the lighthouse to the nearest 100 feet. And we'll use this conversion rate to help us out here. All right, so 
I need to figure out D here. And this, this lighthouse is basically making a right angle with, the, with the, the water. So I have a right triangle here. If I could figure out this distance, then I could just use my regular Sokotoa trig to figure out the height of this. Um, well, actually to figure out the, um, the base here. And so in order to do that, I want to use this oblique triangle. Well, this 36 degree angle tells me that there must be 144 next to it. I'm just using my linear pair concept here. And once I know that, I could fill in the remaining angle up here. I could say that this is 36 degree, no, not 36, uh, 144 and 28 is 172, so this is an eight degree angle up here. Now, will I use that? We'll see. Um, at this point, I think what makes sense is to use the law of sines to solve this. And then once I get my, my x value, then I can come over here and do a trig, a trig equation. All right, so if I use law of sines, sine of 8 over 3.2, sine of 28 over x, solve that out, I get about 10.8. All right, so once I have that, now I can put that 10.8 into my diagram, and that's going to be my hypotenuse. My distance to the shore is my adjacent side. So I see an A and an H that tells me I'm going to use cosine. So cosine 36 equals D over 10.8. Multiply both sides by 10.8, and I get about 8.74. Now 8.74 miles, when multiplying by 5,280 feet, comes out to about 46,100 feet. Okay, so a double triangle problem can easily be solved by solving the oblique triangle first, giving us a piece of the right triangle that we needed in order to use regular trig to solve.